Hey guys, welcome back to The Heads Project. I'm John Ordalaza, and in the lead up to Godzilla vs. Kong, it's the brand new film that's coming to HBO Max this upcoming Wednesday, so I'm going to be reviewing both the Godzilla films that came out recently and Kong Skull Island, starting with Godzilla 2014. Now when I first saw this, this was actually the first Godzilla film I've ever seen. I've never seen any of the old ones where they use kind of like the life models sort of <laughs> and film them. They do that with Power Rangers, I know that. So I've never seen any of those old Godzilla films. They never really looked appealing to me. Maybe I'll check out like the original one, like the first one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, nah, they, they, they don't look like they're for me. But when I saw this trailer, I was excited for it and I really wanted to see it. And to be honest, I was kind of a defender for this movie for a while, I'm not gonna lie. My biggest issue with these types of films, and I'm gonna say this a lot, uh, it's the human characters that they feel like they need a force in there so you can relate to somebody. Because there's no way you can relate to a big transformer or a kaiju-like monster. There's just no way, right? I honestly think there was at least one compelling character and one person that actually worked that was Brian Cranston's character because of course anybody that Brian Cranston plays is going to be relatable it's going to be compelling because he's such a damn good actor I'm not saying that as a slight to Aaron Taylor Johnson who's also in this film and Elizabeth Olsen who uh, oddly enough they're playing a married couple but like just a year later they're casted as the twins of <laughs> Wanda and Pietro in Age of Ultron that's a little weird. It's not a slight to those two actors. They're really good, but it's just Brian Cranston. He's always on another level than his project is. It's insane. It's a good thing I rewatched this film recently because, to my knowledge, I was thinking this dude dies like 10, 15 minutes into the movie, like very early on. Not so much. He's got a decent amount in the first act leading into the second. He's got a conspiracy theory about the government trying to hide the existence of Godzilla and the other monster who's in the film, the one, the, the smooth stone looking one. I forgot his name. He's got a really cool, integral part to the story, and I really do appreciate what Brian Cranston brought to the table. But when he bites the dust, there's really nobody else in this film to grab onto. Like, I find Elizabeth Olsen very charming. Same thing with Aaron Taylor Johnson. I love him in Kick-Ass especially, but there's really nothing from their performances that make me care about them. I like them for who they are like outside and doing other projects like WandaVision or Kick-Ass, like I said, but there's really just nothing else there with their characters. I don't care for their little kid either. Like if a monster just stepped on him by accident, like. I wouldn't care. This film was directed by Gareth Edwards, and in my opinion, it's not the prettiest looking film out of the three leading up to Godzilla vs. Kong. I think he directed Rogue One, which I don't mind with the way Rogue One looked, but this one just was very bleak and downer looking. Like, it looked very dark and just, I don't know, the look of the film is a turnoff in my opinion. It's very dark, and when you get introduced to Godzilla, over an hour into the movie. When you get a full-on shot of Godzilla, it is not until over an hour into the movie, like an hour and four minutes or something like that. He roars, and then it cuts to uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson's kid like in their living room watching TV, watching the fight go down on television. That was the one thing I really didn't appreciate about this film. I don't know how to explain it, but just some of the action scenes, at least the first few that we get an hour into it, it's almost like they were shying away from like giving us full-on action scenes, and I just, I wasn't into that, man. Like, come on, just give me unbridled action with Godzilla. Like, come on. You can say the special effects were good in this, but a lot of the scenes, like I said, take place at night in the dark, so it's kind of like they can hide any flaws. And uh, that's like a plus negative thing for me. It's, it's, it's a hit or miss because I think the Godzilla design looks really cool and it should be put on display. But he's not only hidden from his action scenes in the film, he's just hidden in general by the darkness. And you don't only see him a couple of times in the light in this film. It was kind of underwhelming. But the main Godzilla theme in here, I think is really cool. His roar is awesome. It may be the original one. Let me know down below if it is. I've, again, I've never seen the original Godzilla, but I think it sounded awesome. Did he use laser breath in here? I think he did. Yeah, you, you, no, he did, like once. Yeah, that was pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's kind of forgettable in my opinion. I honestly, after rewatching the second one, I did quite enjoy it a little more, so 
Be sure to stick around, guys. I'm going to be doing a review for Godzilla King of the Monsters very soon. What did you think of Godzilla 2014, though? Let me know down below. And who do you think is going to win between Godzilla vs. Kong in the new film that hits HBO Max this Wednesday? Let me know, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and be sure to stick around because there's always more to come.